Alright, the hype around this film has started cooling down a bit now. It's finally dropped, we've seen what it has to offer, we've gone back and rewatched it, Birds of Prey got absolutely demolished by this film, it's all paved out in front of us now. After a nearly 10 month wait, I personally believe that it was worth it. I thought the film was great and very enjoyable, as I've said several times before. However, once I saw this film for a second time, I did notice a couple flaws and looking around on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, blog posts, I've seen and heard what others thought too. And since I was just quite simply dazzled after watching it for the first time, I labelled it as an excellent film. Is it that good though? Like, Well, after exploring the internet for others' opinions, I've compiled some points for, against and some other controversial topics. First section of this video will be me counter-arguing the points against the film. Second will be me assessing parts of the film I look back on and think, that, that could have been done a bit better. And the third section will just be more minor, slightly controversial points that have been raised. I will try to be fair and give each side an equal chance, but it's kind of hard when you still have a bit of bias, you know, like... Um, once again, this is my opinion of what I thought about the movie. From looking around online, I do acknowledge that other people wanted something a little bit different to what we got, and that's fine. I personally thought that this was a great start to a new possible franchise, and I'll expand upon this argument later on, but yeah, these are just my opinions, they're not set in stone, so don't tear at me in the comments for saying I liked or disliked elements from the film. That's just me. And uh, yeah, so blah blah blah, stuff you don't care about, okay? Now, where to begin? Now, one of the most common things I'm seeing people say about the movie was that the plot was too simple, that it was an awfully bland film with a very basic plot, and that it was prone to cliches and techniques used to death, and I can kinda see where they're coming from with this. The story is partially shown in all the trailers, as yes, Sonic and Tom are on the run from the government. It's just that we see in the film the motive for Sonic and Tom's journey together. Sonic has some rings capable of teleportation, when he's shot by Tom, he accidentally opens portals to San Francisco and drops the rings into it. That's what kickstarts the journey for the film's plot, and if you ask me, the fact that it's simple works perfectly fine. In fact, it perfectly reflects the games and their often very simplistic plots. People were complaining that the film was as basic as it could be and that it needs to take more risks than it did, also saying that dialogue felt like it pandered more to seven year olds at times. While I do admit that, yes, some of the dialogue is a lot more basic than it really needs to be, I don't think that that's really fair. It's clearly a kid's film, it's made for children, it's a whole new origin of the character Sonic the Hedgehog, who himself is a character designed to entertain children. It doesn't have to be mind-blowingly radical with the story to appeal to the younger demographic. And hell, the story is accompanied by very clear character arcs. Sonic finally gets his friend he always wanted. Tom realises he doesn't want to go to San Francisco, he, he just wants to stay with his friends and family in Green Hills. Both Tom and his wife accept Sonic as a sort of child to them now. It's it's an easygoing experience that is enjoyable for everyone. The plot doesn't have to be an expansive masterpiece, like on the same level as the MCU. It, it doesn't have to be like that to be considered good. And the plot was simple enough to be entertaining, but not so complex that it could confuse younger audience members. That's my theory behind it anyway, but... For real though, since when did every film's plot need to have tons of branches and side stories to be considered good? Simple storage structure can work, and in this movie, it did work. Other claims that people have made is that the movie does not endorse as much stuff from the games as they believe it should have. I've seen a review on YouTube where it stated that the film should probably delve more into the distinguished content that has come from the games, and I'm just going to be frank with this, I don't believe that statement at all. I mentioned earlier that this is a new beginning, an alternate origin of Sonic. We've we've clearly been shown that his origin is not what it is in the official lore for the games, so I personally don't see much point in adding all this stuff from the games into this film in particular. Don't get me wrong, the stuff at the beginning of the film I liked. They incorporated the OG Green Hill Zone, they featured the Echidna Tribe, that, that stuff I did like, and it's a good throwback to the games that I played as a child. However, the younger audience members, who probably haven't grown up with the same Sonic experience I did, may not feel the same thing I did when they showed up, and when Sonic crosses over into our world, we obviously see less references to the games, as they don't technically exist in this version of our world. But 
when people say that they were expecting more focus on the traditional Sonic themed stuff, I can't help but wonder what they think they saw in the trailers, because even in the trailers, so the Sonic themed stuff took up a small portion of it. I predicted going into this film that it would focus on Sonic fitting into our type of world, adjusting to our pop culture, to our traditions, that sort of thing. And it was to an extent. So, what makes you think that this film would have a focus on stuff only prior fans of the game character would know? Like I said earlier, this is a new origin that has a target audience of kids. Young, impressionable kids that may not have played a Sonic game in their life yet. That's why the plot is so simple, that's why the dialogue is not a simile and metaphor packed, and that's why there are few references to the game series. It's clear as anything that this isn't an add-on to the games. This is entirely separate and caters towards a different audience than people like me. Hell, I'm 16 and talking about a film about a blue alien with fucking super speed. I recognise that these films are not made for the niche audience I slot into. That's why I went in expecting something quite different to the games themselves. I recognise that I'm a secondary audience, so satisfying people that have played the games is not as important. Why is that so hard to acknowledge? I'm sure they'll do more references in the sequel, just sit down and stop fantasising about your head cannon. Jesus Christ. Alright, there are other points to get into, but they're not nearly as pressing as the ones I just highlighted. Any that I am abstaining on, I may put at the end of this video, but who knows. So, I've been arguing for this film so far. I loved it and enjoyed every minute of it, but I'm not just going to sit here and say that it was perfect, because even on my second viewing, I spotted stuff that does throw the consistency of the film out the window. For starters, one big thing that was completely overlooked by the film's characters is the fact that Sonic is crazy fast. And this... I cannot refute. That is a problem with this film. The first time Tom sees Sonic speed is when he lets him go out of his car to find San Francisco on his own. And he doesn't question this. Like, he, he doesn't bat a bloody eyelid. I get that he's an alien hedgehog and all, but at what point are you just like, ah, oh, well, I guess that's just normal for him. Now, you could argue that Tom already expected the speed, as Crazy Carl told everyone in Green Hills about the Blue Devil, and he may have mentioned something about the speed, but we can't really say for sure. So, that's why this point is relatively unrefutable. Like, that speed came out of nowhere for Tom, and he's just playing it off as if it were nothing. Same thing for the most... Actually, no. All the characters are pretty much impervious to all instances where he showcases his speed. That does kinda annoy me, but what really does annoy me is the third act of the film, when Sonic, Tom and his wife finally make it to San Francisco. There are more problems in this portion of the film than the rest. So first thing, Tom's wife is pointless in this part of the film. Seriously, she has no purpose other than being an additional personality to the climax of the film. She only mattered at the very beginning of the third act by waking Sonic up with smelling salts. What else does she do? Ugh. What else? Uh, oh yeah. Remember that scene earlier on when Sonic and Tom were in that motel resting after the bar fight scene? It was a nice, kinda cute scene, and ends with Tom's face on the news being labelled as a domestic terrorist. Kind of excessive, but anything goes, I guess. In Act 3, he just walks right into San Francisco with no repercussions, even looking directly at a receptionist in the Transamerica Pyramid. I probably could have let this slide because, I mean, obviously not everybody would be watching the news, but a receptionist looking dead on into his eye, that, that, is, in, that is ridiculous, that is irrefutable. There's just no way that... Okay, right. It's a hub area, so... Come on, film, you've got to try harder than that. And in the scene shot after this receptionist scene, there's the do you have a child in that bag joke. And I mean, it's funny because it's Sonic in the bag and he adds on to Tom's suspicious acts by making kidnapping and abuse references. Um, it, uh, should we really be joking about a subject like that? And also, why does this go absolutely nowhere? He wasn't reported for suspicious behaviour. Okay, this next one is a bit of a nitpick, but it's still a thing that takes me out of the moment. Skip forward a few scenes, as the confrontation between Sonic and Robotnik in San Francisco was actually pretty exhilarating. But 
just note that it is broad daylight here. This shot right here, yeah, that's broad daylight. Not even close to sunset. Now, Sonic decides to use some rings to go to different places across the planet and possibly give Robotnik the slip. They go through France, which is in daytime, then to China, also in daytime, then to Egypt in daytime, uh, then finally back to Green Hills, which is all of a sudden in the middle of the night. What? They must have traversed through those portals for hours for this to even remotely make sense, but hey, this isn't the only film to fall victim to this. I'm not gonna just label it to this one alone. There are dozens of them out there, so can't get too mad, I guess. But really, if you start looking at individual moments in the film, you notice these things more clearly and, well, the little stuff really does begin to add up. Last stuff to cover is the more minor, yet still slightly controversial stuff, and since I've been going on and on for quite a bit now, I'm guessing, I'll do this in a quick fire way, starting now. <laughs> a hatred of Tom doesn't make much sense, but the comedy that came from it I enjoyed. Probably just a marketing ploy piggybacking off of Baby Yoda's success that I thought was a meh inclusion. A good take on the classic villain, and you can just tell that he was having a whale of a time on set, fitting for a very vibrant movie. Pretty dull to be honest, but I don't mind as it made the film seem a bit more laid back and I'm all for that. It was a godsend that they actually redid Sonic's design, and I like how there was a moment in the bar fight scene where the film even pokes fun at the fact that he has no muscles. Pretty minimal compared to other films, but still noticeable. Probably didn't need a dialogue to spell it out what it was advertising to us though. Looks like the fans that wanted a film filled with more game references are going to get what they want, eh? But I'm alright with the second film so long as it's not bad. Could have probably shown less in all the trailers and promotional material, not gonna lie. Bullshittingly painful to watch both times round. They played it safe and it paid off well, with Keanu Reeves, Sanic and Gotta Go Fast all being placed into film without it feeling too forced. There are plentiful for you to pick up on and give the film a more enjoyable experience for audience members. No. And that's about it. I've pretty much covered all of the topics I can think of off the top of my head and there's probably other stuff too but I don't want this video to be too long and to be honest I'm not sure if there is anything else I can talk about so what was the purpose of me making this third video on this movie? Well I'm trying to upload a bit more first and foremost and secondly I just wanted to go back and take a look at what I said when it came out and me reflecting on it again now because when I came out after seeing this movie I was just blown away at how much better it was than I thought it would be. I thought it was an excellent film with very little plot holes and looking back now I know that I maybe oversold the film a bit too much. And I think I know why. From the moment the movie started I was hoping that it would be good. It's been a 10 month wait and the internet was just going crazy when the redesign appeared in November. I was hoping that it would be one of the few movies to break the curse of video game films. And to be honest. It kind of did. It was a fresh take on a game character I grew up with. Its plot was nice and simple to follow along with. I enjoyed what I saw and I know that other people wanted something different to what we ended up with but I loved it and still love it. It took me back to a time where I wasn't farming souls on the high wall of Lotharic or caring about my KD or constantly queuing for competitive matches or ranting on about how games should do this and that. While watching the film I quite simply felt like a kid again, waking up on a Saturday morning to play Mario Kart on my Nintendo DS Lite, turning on either the GameCube or Wii and going to an alternate world where I felt at home, going through level after level and still having a massive smile on my face, and seeing this new origin of Sonic and looking around me in the theatre and seeing loads of kids smiling just like I was, that took me back. This film gave me nostalgia. Um, the feeling I had on my first viewing of this film I can only describe as actual, genuine, childish happiness. <clears throat> um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, overall this film isn't perfect, uh, but... It was an enjoyable hour and a half, so thanks for watching I guess, uh, leave your thoughts down below, like and subscribe and I'll see you soon I guess, um, j j just give me a minute, I need to go to Tropical Resort again.